yesterday at 10 a.m. Officials say 10 humanitarian corridors to evacuate people from regions being besieged by Russian forces has have been agreed pride, for today, Saturday. The routes include one for civilians to escape from the devastated southern city of Mariupol. It's as Russia is believed to have reorganized its military leadership in Ukraine, giving overall charge to General Alexander Dvornikov, who Western officials say has extensive experience of Russian That's operations Gashi. in Syria. Meanwhile, President Zelensky has called for a firm global response to Friday's missile strike on a railway station in the eastern city of Kramatorsk, which killed 52 people. Russia's denied it was to blame for the attack. Simon Jones reports. They were trying to escape the conflict as Russia steps up its offensive in the east of Ukraine. People already packed onto this train in Kramatorsk in the hope of traveling to safety when the missile struck. What did we do to the Russians to deserve this? We are civilians. Let's go plus L plus your wife plus ratio. Described by Ukraine as another war crime by Russia. As soon as the shelling ended, we ran here and saw a terrible sight. People were running, screaming, crying, praying. It was scary. Cars were exploding. There was panic everywhere. Nearby, the remains of a missile, painted on it in Russian the words for the children. It's unclear whether it might have malfunctioned or whether it was shot down as it was heading for a different target. But Western officials believe it's likely it was a Russian missile fired indiscriminately. Obviously, the targeting of civilians would certainly be a war crime. And we've already called a range of the actions we've seen what? to date a war crime, but we're going to be supporting efforts. To OK, I didn't know that it, there was also Russian writing on it that said for the children. Hey. More in, more information is uh, is is uh, necessary in the situation. I think that it it most likely was. Or I originally was like, oh, it's definitely, you know, a misfire yeah, or one that was like shot over and fell nice into. Uh, this uh, civilian area, because what people immediately uh, went off on and said was happening here is that like uh, what what people immediately say is like oh they're killing people they're killing civilians indiscriminately on purpose they're doing it on purpose they're doing it on purpose it's like well they could do way more if they were uh, personally trying to kill as many civilians as possible right I originally thought it was a mistake but now that I see it says like for children on the missile that seems really that seems way Ten weirder for the children could be the Russian propaganda that they're saying saving the children could be interpreted in support of the children yeah I remember that uh, I, I remember what was it like wasn't it like Israeli kids writing that on bombs on missiles too before that they were firing off anyway um or it could literally be, you know, this one is for our kids or something. I don't know. And they, they accidentally or deliberately blasted the uh, train station in this area. For the children of Luhansk and Donetsk, that's what they mean. Regardless, it's disgusting. It's war, of course. Um, yeah, during the Lebanon war. Bro, this writing shit is so corny. Holy f this war is turning into Hollywood. I don't believe anyone wrote that shit. Wait, no, that's... No, that's, that's not new. Israeli kids were literally writing notes... Uh, that they were way more fucking gruesome on on rockets they were sending into Lebanon. It's a it's a classic. It's a super old school classic. As a matter of fact, it's not new at all. Uh, back and forth on this issue, even though it is, I don't think it's Ukraine, and I don't think it's a false flag. For the record, I know a lot of people are uh, on the other side of the equation saying it is probably a false flag, or it's probably Ukrainians. I don't think so. I think the more likely scenario is. The more likely scenario is that they they sent a rocket that probably uh, amongst the sea of rockets that were being sent off, uh, one of them accidentally uh, fell into this area. Okay, whether because it was a misfire, whether it was a miscalculation, or because it was shot in the air. No, Russia knows that reinforcements come by train. I mean that's still bullshit. You know, there, there are rules. But Bucha was not an accident, for the record. No, I'm not saying that. that at all. The reason why people are, uh, uh, the reason why people on Twitter especially are like, oh, well, what the f*** is a false flag or whatever, is because the rockets being Absolutely. used 
According to Russian sources, at least, or uh, people who analyze this stuff uh, on, on the Russian front that aren't necessarily pro-Russian even, the, the, the rockets that are being used are not uh, Russian. Well, they are Russian rockets too, but they're decommissioned Russian rockets and they only exist in Belarus. And, and Russians claim that they have not used them here in this side, but Ukrainians use them. They've dropped some in, the Don uh, in, in Donetsk. And no, it's not the Russians don't have this rocket. Of course Russians have this rocket. People are the same. They speak similar, if not the same language. They use the same military equipment it's it's additionally chaotic anyway let's continue investigate exactly what happened here that's the much love russia we should trust the russian sources for what type of rocket it is no not the russian sources russian sources are going to lie the only reason why i look at russian sources is to understand what the russian side is saying to understand what their motivation is and what they're claiming it is. For example, the uh, lies of denazification. It's important to understand what Russia is saying back home so you understand what their what their propaganda looks like. Just like it's important to understand um, when they say denazification and then uh, turn around and Dennis Pashilin offers a denazification medal to a dude wearing a Totemkov patch, that makes it a little bit r more ridiculous, right? Do you understand? When I say I'm looking at uh, analysts that, that cover Russian sources, that doesn't mean pro-Russia analysts. That means analysts that f know what Russian weapons look like, that aren't expressly pro-Russia. They're usually anti-Russia, but they have a better knowledge and understanding of like what kind of weapons Russians use and what their tactics look like. Uh, it goes a little bit beyond just immediately f jumping uh, on, on everything. Ultimately, it doesn't even f matter because they are butchers. They're butchers. They invaded Ukraine and they're butchering the people of Ukraine. So all of these extra like attacks on civilians is just padding on top. Has denied any involvement, saying no missions were planned in that area at the time. But the Ukrainian president says it shows the need for greater international support for his country. Russia's war against our nation may end in victory for freedom much sooner than many in the world think if Ukraine simply receives the weapons we have asked for. Any delay in providing such weapons to Ukraine, any excuses can mean only one thing. Some politicians want to help the Russian leadership more than us Ukrainians. Equipment is being sent, such as tanks from the Czech Republic, while Britain has promised more anti-aircraft and anti-tank missiles. New Russian offences in the east are expected sooner rather than later. In Kramatorsk, the human cost of the conflict is clear. The message from the Ukrainian government is that Russia will be held accountable. Simon Jones, BBC more. News. President Zelensky has also been talking to CBS News in the United States following his visit to Bucha and his address to the United Nations Security Council. Here's a little of what he had to say. What must the world understand? It's going to be the exact same thing he's been saying. We need more weapons. We need more guns. We need more weapons. We need more guns. Like, obviously, uh, if this is to continue, if negotiations are uh, not going to come to a conclusion, then they need more guns to continue. The West knows this as well. The West obviously doesn't give a shit about Ukrainian lives as much as uh, they claim that they do. If they cared about Ukrainian lives, they would try to come to uh, a negotiation immediately, like literally immediately. All wars end with negotiations. Kind of always agree and if there's the not going to be all out nuclear holocaust, which is Britain. the only f alternative to Russia, because there's no amount of weapons that you can give to Ukrainians that will stop the, the Russian uh, imperialist forces from advancing. We live in a world where uh, Russia has 6,000 nuclear warheads and Russia has a standing military and Russia is a nation state that has a standing military fighting against another nation state that also has a standing military. It's not like Libya. It's not like Afghanistan. It's not like, uh, you know, Iraq. This is a little bit more different. And a lot of Americans, a lot of Westerners personally think that all the war that they've seen as a consequence of all the wars that they've seen in the media uh, throughout their upbringing is wars where you just fight counterinsurgencies for 20 years, okay? So you don't have an understanding of what it's like when you are talking to a nation state with nuclear warheads, millions of people, uh, that is an economic power, okay, that has like economic influence over, uh, over Europe. Russia's nukes are a contingency plan to stop the Western world from putting boots on the ground. We are defending the ability of a person to live in the modern world. They say we're defending Western values, and I always say, well, what are Western values? 
someone who lives in the United States or Europe, do they not like children? Do they not want their children to go to university? Do they not want their grandfather to live for a hundred years? We have the same values. We are defending the right to live. I never thought this right was so costly. These are human values so that Russia doesn't choose what we should do and how I'm using my rights. That right was given to me by God and my parents. What did you see in Bucha? Death. Just death. Western officials say a Russian general with extensive experience in Syria has been put in charge of Moscow's operations in Ukraine. For the record, for people who are saying like, oh, Western values, or people who bring up like the fact that he straight up brought an Azov battalion dude to the uh, Greek parliament, let me explain something to you. The more this conflict extends and the more this conflict continues, the more Zelensky is going to grasp at anything he can that he thinks is going to galvanize the West. To bring in like an international, uh, somewhat relatively supremacist, Western supremacist attitude, to possibly, uh, to possibly muster up a, a better defense. It's not going to happen, most likely. Uh, I don't think that it, it matters. I don't think it matters that they're like, oh, we're upholding Western values or whatever. But it will create uh, a, a, a negative feedback loop against Ukraine in other countries that have dealt with Nazis in the past. There's just nothing, there's nothing he has. He's, uh, he's just trying to muster up support as best as he possibly can. Tony's wife became a cop. You've got to go back That's it. to the ark. Nazism is inherent to Western supremacist thought? Yes, I know. Ukraine. General Alexander Dvornikov has been given the job of improving coordination between Russia's forces. Sandra, Commentators say they glasses. expect new offensives. The other side of this conflict is that the more he says, come on, we're defending Western values. This is a battle between East and West. This is a battle between East and West. Yeah, except, you know, the more you say that, the more fucking, you know, China and India and all of those other countries that uh, are, are neutral, okay, but like, let's be real, they're not neutral, uh, will feel more um, emboldened in their position. Like, if we're, if, we're going, uh, if we're going to a multipolar world where there are going to be different uh, superpowers, then Ukraine being in the middle of that is not good in the south and the east of Ukraine sooner rather than later. Well, we can cross to Lviv now and speak to our correspondent there, Emma Vaughn. Didn't he say it's not Western values, though? I'm confused. No, he said it's like Ukraine defends the West. There's this like, uh, I mean, this is an attitude that you hear. Uh, this is an attitude that you hear from a lot of people in the West where it's like Ukraine is the, the Western front against like the barbarian Russian uh, horde, basically. Okay. I still can't get over the fact that Boris Johnson is in Kiev. Um, interesting development, that one, on the uh, Russian general being put in charge. Um, and, and this sort of thing uh, comes shortly after Russia saying that it's going to focus its, its efforts on the east of Ukraine. And we saw its troops being pulled out earlier this week uh, from the north. Yeah, that's right. That new general... This is going to happen more, by the way. These atrocities are going to happen more frequently in the East now, I think. ...experience with uh, Russia's <laughs> operation in Syria, and it's being taken to mean, really, that Russian units want to work together better, because most Western analysts will say, look, Russia wasn't able to achieve its objectives in the early days of the conflict. It surrounded Kyiv, but was never able to uh, topple the Ukrainian government. It was never able to take the capital city, and Russian units suffered many losses. So it's expected that this general will be put in charge of making Russian units work together uh, more cohesively on the ground then we are expecting to see the russian offensive stepping up in eastern ukraine and that is why for a couple of days now there's been serious warnings by ukrainian officials telling people to evacuate to escape from the donbass region as soon as they can and that is what was happening of course yesterday with thousands of people yes i know she's talking exactly the three-head emote okay i know stop that's you're being you're being brevophobic right now. This is literally brevophobic racism, okay? You need to stop with your brevophobic racism.
This anti bruv sentiment will not stand, okay? Especially when the number one oi brav, Boris Johnson, bravely and boldly went to um, uh, Kiev. Um, he put his life on the line to uh, talk to uh, President uh, Zelensky personally. That's right. Uh, Boris Johnson, the Ottoman blooded, uh, uh, the Ottoman blooded, blooded Anglo Saxon, is um, inside of the borders of Ukraine as of today. Yes, um, that's right. Uh, he's there. He's going to end the conflict uh, personally. Waiting to evacuate to safety from that uh, railway station. Thousands of people have been there for a couple of days fleeing the region uh, when those missiles hit. So there were bound to be civilian casualties. It was a scene of devastation. And that is what the Ukrainian president is saying is, yes, more evidence uh, of a Russian war crime, more evidence of Moscow deliberately targeting civilians. Of course, Russians deny this. Uh, they point the finger back at Ukraine, saying they were not responsible for this missile.